Hi, everyone, and welcome to Elevate Your Life on Dr. T TV. I'm Dr. T, and this is the place where emotionally sensitive people get the emotional tools that they need to succeed. With me today is an awesome guest. I'm so excited for you to meet. Her name is Natalie Matsushenko. Yay, oh, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, was my, that was what I wanted to get correct, so we're off to a good start. So I'm going to read Natalie's bio for you because it's amazing. So Natalie is a PCC, a CPCC, and is an expert in helping you find your purpose. Also helping you create abundance and turn your passions into a lifestyle. Co-author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Ignite Conscious Leadership book, Ivy League University and top business school graduate and adventurer. Okay, I got it more correct there. Um, Natalie has helped thousands of soulful go-getters, entrepreneurs, Fortune 100 executives, not-for-profit leaders, and people in the top echelons of government make a huge impact in the world while taking radically good care of themselves and creating lives that they love. Natalie created her extraordinary life and believes that anybody can do it, even in tough circumstances. She's healed from every kind of childhood trauma and learned how to thrive. And Natalie then left a high-flying career in international development to pursue her own version of success. She's lived in five countries, uh, studied extensively with all kinds of healers and shamans around the world. And she's traveled to over, is it 60 countries? 80 countries. Oh, 60. 60 countries. And Natalie currently lives in Columbia, South America, where she spends four months out of the year in the United States and traveling the world with her husband and three daughters. Natalie, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. T. It's great to be here. This is and amazing. I, I felt I like I had this. to come in with this tiny clarification. Yeah, oh, please, my work please. at the upper echelons of government has been with past administrations. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I really wanted to clear that one up because okay. staying and away from government. is very important. We want to know where you've been, what you've done, and who you've been doing it with. <laughs> yeah, nothing with the federal government now. I got it, sure. I got it. Oh, no, it's so great to have you on. I recently had such a great experience uh, with you interviewing me for your awesome upcoming summit for women to have an extraordinary life over the age of 40. And so I'm so excited to get into it today and and have our audience of emotionally sensitive powerhouse people get to know you and your perspectives and everything that you can share with them to make their lives better uh, now and as they're going through their lifespan. Um, so let, Natalie, let's start out a little bit about, just talking a little bit about your journey that really brought you through all of these amazing things that you've been doing and the life that you've been living and and how that brought you to be somebody today that is really kicking butt helping women live their best life, especially at an age when people think, uh, you know, it's a whole different deal than it is. Yeah. So let me try to, you know, synthesize yeah. it all yeah. because I am very much an emotionally sensitive person <laughs> what I've talked about, highly, highly sensitive. And I was born in the former Soviet Union, you know, one of the most totalitarian regimes, immigrated to the States as a girl. And I mention that because, you know, obviously there was a lot of trauma associated with all of that and, you know, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. I don't even know what you call cultural, societal, communist sure. abuse, but a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff. Wow. But as the child of immigrants and being an immigrant myself, I was also really raised, you know, to do something practical, study hard, work hard, you know, basically make lots of money and have like a really secure job in future, right? And follow the prescription, right? Follow yeah, the prescription. absolutely. Like this was their American dream and, you know, I had to fulfill it. And I did what was expected of me. You know, I got the good grades. I went to an Ivy League university. I went to a top business school. I was 22 years Years old, right out of college, working at the World Bank, literally working on multi million dollar projects, traveling the world, five star, meeting with captains of industry and ministers of countries. And I 
was miserable. Oh, wow. Wow. I was drinking. I was doing all kinds of stuff to basically, I was self-medicating yeah. all over the place mm-hmm. to, you know, keep all that stuff at bay, both all the trauma and, yeah. you know, being so sensitive and how I was, you know, had processed yeah. that trauma all along. And so basically to make a long story short, that led to a journey of taking a break from the World Bank for a year and backpacking through Southeast Asia with the man who eventually became my husband. And this was before the internet. So we <laughs> like- Before eat, pray, love, right? <laughs> exactly. This was before the internet people, or rather it was around, but nobody used it for anything ever. So it was truly like disconnecting, right? With a lonely planet, calling home once a month from some phone station, like, in Bangkok saying I'm a lot, you know, and it costs like five bucks a minute, right. which on a backpacker's budget's a lot. So the bottom line is I took that year to completely immerse myself in different cultures, travel, get away from life as I knew it. And that was really when I realized, oh my God, I hate what I'm doing. I'm a people person. I've always been interested in psychology and sociology and anthropology and everything that has to do with people and not, you know, finance and numbers, which is what I was doing. I realized how much I had to heal. I met people who were doing, you know, an Austrian engineer who dropped out to become an energy healer, which now is so like everyone's doing it, right? (laughs) But this was what? Oh my God! I don't. You know, twenty. That was like cray cray back then. That's yeah, cray-cray. like nobody did this, and no, because there was no internet, nobody even knew about anyone who no. did this, right? And as I met people who did alternate things, it just opened my mind, right? And when I came back to the states, you know, to pay off my student loans and do all that healing and figure out what to do with my life. I, you know, I started exploring my passion and purpose. I left the World Bank. I started studying psychology in a psychology doctorate program. I took a job running a program for homeless women. And I was trained as a coach, like almost 20 years ago when everyone thought, wait, what's a coach? Are you a, you know, a physical trainer? <laughs> but I was also lit and I started doing a lot of leadership coaching and, you know, stuff like that. Um, But because I was living in Washington, D.C., which was just filled with, you know, kind of type A lawyers, I don't know what I really want to do with my life. People started asking me, like, how'd you do it? Like, how did you make a break? How did you break out of the box and leave, you know? Um, I was hired by the U.S. Peace Corps to do a program for their returned volunteers who were like, what do I do next with my life? And that's basically how my passion and purpose work was born and my passion and purpose life course, which I've been doing now in various renditions for nearly 20 years, because what I realized that I'm always a person, you know, who is searching, uh, who who feels the need to live my passions, to be clear on my purpose. And I love, love, love working with people to help them do that because people just come alive, you know, and whether that means, you know, a huge life change, you know, like completely different career, leaving your partner, you know, whatever it is, or taking up a hobby that, you know, just makes you come alive. I've worked with, you know, thousands. So it's been all of that. Just the energy shifts, people come alive, you know, life starts to feel like, yeah, I'm living the life I'm meant to be living. Natalie, this is amazing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, and that, you know, and that is actually what brought me to Colombia, you know, right around my 40th birthday. That was, I jokingly call it my midlife crisis, right? Because (laughs) when we get into our late 30s, I've I've since learned early 40s even could be as early as mid thirties, our hormones start to shift. Mm -hmm. That estrogen goes down and you know, it's, it's really misunderstood in our society and we're considered over the hill and something we don't want. But actually, it's such an incredible opportunity because what happens I've learned is as that estrogen goes down is that we stop caring so much what everyone else thinks because part of estrogen's role is to have us make nice, you know, because for thousands of years, if we didn't, you know, get along with the tribe or spoke up too much, you know, we'd be kicked out and we and our children could not survive. So part of estrogen's role is, you know, not only to help us make babies, but, you know, and as and I like to say, you know, when that estrogen goes down, the rose-colored glasses come off, if they were even there. And all of a sudden, 
we start saying, wait, is this it? Is this my life? You know, our relationships go under the microscope. What we're doing in the world goes under the microscope. Often we start having all kinds of physical symptoms. <laughs> um, and it's a great invitation. You know, and in my case, when that estrogen went down, I was actually in the process of interviewing people for a book I was going to write. I interviewed like 70 people between the ages of 20 and 70 who've made major life changes to follow their dreams. And this was a decade ago before that book had been written. <laughs> and as I was living in cold Massachusetts interviewing people, I learned one of the most important things I learned was that living from passion and purpose is an attitude towards life. It's a way of questioning and looking for the passion. And I interviewed amazing people in their 60s, their 70s and beyond who were still like energized and excited and vibrant and had lots of projects. And I said, I want to be that. And then I said, wait, I don't want to be in cold Massachusetts writing about people who are following their <laughs> passions. I have always wanted, you know, I traveled tons before I had kids and lived in a few countries. And I want to live abroad with my kids. I want them to grow up to be citizens of the world. And so, as I like to say, I moved the mountains, otherwise known as my stability-loving husband, who was actually pretty <laughs> happy with life in the U.S., and our three girls, who at the time were literally 13 months, you know, five and eight, to a small town in the Colombian Andes, and uh, we started traveling a lot. I was working remotely, and... and if you'll indulge me one more minute. So I thought life was awesome. And I was finally, you know, I felt like, yes, this is it. I'm finally living my passion and purpose. And then start started, stuff started happening. When I was about 42 or 43 in a six month period, I, you know, I went for a doctor's checkup, just a random checkup, which led to, oh, I feel something in your thyroid. And they actually thought there was a malignant thing yeah. after doing all these tests. So first they were looking for, thyroid cancer. Then we moved on to breast cancer, lung cancer, adrenal cancer, cut out a few moles for mel that were tested for melanoma. And uh, a cardiologist told me that I would need open heart surgery within a year and a half. Oh my, what a journey you have been on. And I was like, what on earth is this, right? Yeah. Like, I've been drinking my green juice. I've been taking care of myself. I've done yeah. a gazillion years of therapy what's going on. Anyway, to not make this story too long, just to say that looking at what, what was transpiring and how to heal my heart led me to healing even more layers of my sensitive soul sure. and just realizing how, yeah, and then the night sweats, the hot flashes, like I had it all, right? And <laughs> as I started looking for resources for that, I realized how this time, especially in a woman's life, basically from mid thirties, say mm -hmm. to mid fifties, is such an opportunity and a calling, right? To shed whatever doesn't work, mm -hmm. to release, to bring into our life what does, you know, truly resonates with us and feeds our souls and our bodies speak to us. And oh. yeah, yeah, you know, and it's been, it was such a journey and it was so challenging actually to find experts. You know, it's like everyone would have their little piece, like yeah. take this herb, drink this tea, do this technique, you know, and everything sort of helped a little, but it was hard to figure it all out comprehensively. And I realized that all my friends, my age, all my clients were going through this, some version of the same thing, perimenopausal symptoms, physical aches and pains or disease and challenges, you know, unhappiness in relationships, just all kinds of stuff. And so I knew this information had to get out there. And so this is my second annual Extraordinary Life After 40 Summit, because last year, just like this year, we got nearly 50 experts together on everything from balancing hormones to relationships, sex, health, money, purpose, beauty, just everything that has to do with a woman's life at this stage so that and I'm doing it again this year. And it was wonderful to have you as a guest yeah. uh, because the idea is there are a lot of resources, you know, every woman's not going to have time to watch nearly 50 speakers, but right. it's free. You can pick and choose and get the info that you need to create your extraordinary life. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, wow. What a, this is amazing, Natalie. We're so fortunate to have you on the show. 
because you're speaking to so many different things. And the one I'll just start with that is the last thing that you just said is about how essential it is that, you know, when we're looking to transform as a person, we're looking to up level and we're looking to address things. The, the, our, the way our whole system is so segmented and specialized, while that's, a, it, that's the way it's supposed to work on one level, because I believe each of us come here to with, with expertise and we're meant to give that expertise. That is, our, that is our purpose. At the same time, because we are ultimately one human system, having to go to you know so many different resources all the time, I think it's really part of what prohibits people from having optimal health and well-being and prosperity and all of that because everything's separated it's like your relationships and your add over here <laughs> and your hot flashes over here and your finances over here <laughs> and and it, i think it's really exceptional i know it to and i was glad to be part of it to pull together expertise where somebody can take the time to go through, you know, you can get through 50 experts if you want. You can yeah. take the time to grow and learn because out of everything um, I see creating really good health for people, the foundation of it is this non, is this way that um, growth, you know, you were talking about seeking. I really feel like it, it's, it's growth is our, is our, is our purpose to keep yeah. becoming experts. And I love that you've really created a place where, you created a resource that has so much expertise for people. Um, and I'm so excited for them to be able to, to watch this and, and follow along what you did. Cause like, here's what it is. You did all of that and you're like, Hey, I did this. And so you don't have to go figure it all out. I know it took a big <laughs> decade to sort it out. And plus what's really cool too, is we have a private Facebook group, which right now has about 1500 members from last year's summit. And so women, you know, share resources and talk oh, about the stuff right. that's going on. And that is, you know, it's so important and so powerful. Cause again, I think society just sort of, you know, there's this whole thing about menopause and that somehow yeah. we're out to pasture. And what I what I discovered as I was talking to all these amazing experts and going through my own journey is every single woman I spoke with who is live or trying to live consciously said, it just gets better and better. I, I care yeah. less and less what anyone else thinks. I feel like I'm living my own life and my best life. And it's like the best kept secret out there that you can't put us out to pasture at 40 or 50. You know, if we're lucky, we still have like 40 to 60 years to go. Right. Our life is just beginning. Well, this is so important because out of all the consultations that we do at my company, uh, as people come, you know, and we go through what it is that they're struggling with, it's unbelievable the amount of things that they have done to work on themselves, to, to for wellness, for addressing issues. Yeah. However, by the time somebody kind of gets to a certain stage, and it's also getting earlier, by the way, now because we're with technology now, we're we're using up our resources internally so much more. But by the time someone comes into a consultation and they are somewhere in that 40s or 50s mark they're they're so they're so because they don't have these resources all in one place typically they're so exhausted and believing this mindset like it's over but mm -hmm. they're saying i got 40 years left to go but they don't feel excited about that they feel afraid like if i am so sensitive that i am this exhausted now how am i going to do this stretch it's almost like how am i going to do this stretch of time <laughs> it feels like that and right. and the reality is if if somebody has not really been able to fully prioritize all of these amazing things that go on when you make your own self and your own purpose the priority then you may not realize what it is to live a life truly aligned in your passion and with so much self-knowledge that you can utilize and never get bored of all of the, you know, all of the upcoming years are like, it, it really is where it gets so interesting. Yes. And there's, I mean, there's so much to do, to see, to experience, to be, to be. right? I mean, I've noticed in my own meditations and visualizations for the day, you know, how much it's shifted over the years from what I wanted to have in my life 
to the state of being I wanted to have, you know? To having what you already have, to being in what you already have. exactly. And this is also so important, and I really invite everybody to continue to recognize the things that we always talk about um, on the show, and that is about um, understanding our conditioning as a culture and as a gender and not only our own that we have bought into and that we've absorbed, but what's going on around us in our in our in our uh, brothers and sisters, and especially even you know our girlfriends that are always trying to help. There are so many belief systems about all of this that actually, interestingly, make this time of life and make growing and 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 aging, which I really don't see as how I see what we're doing is we're growing and we're evolving, but mm-hmm. it makes it seems so awful and like it's going to be terrible and the reality is our mind is a powerful thing and we can condition ourselves in a whole different way that says as you point out now it just gets better and better i get better i feel better i i'm smarter sexier healthier more interesting and all of that and we get to choose that and that's what i find so amazing about emotional training and doing the work on yourself no, absolutely. And, it, you know, it has been proven that we are so conditioned. Uh, you know, they've done these, what do you want to call them? I don't know, expeditions, you know, to yeah. traditional cultures where where people are considered wise and really revered <laughs> as part of the tribe as they age. And they have found, you might have heard this already, that in these tribes there are no menopausal symptoms i know oh i so know that i so right know. yeah now and natalie nobody, this nobody is, has all these issues with this getting is very older. important for everybody to get this that we have generations of conditioning around yeah. you know this difficult time of life and people like women shutting down breaking down giving up giving in and having all kinds of disease and stuff form pathology form and it's like you're just again you're like waiting out your stretch of time and that conditioning is really important because mate wherever there was in history and i'm going to make a funny joke but say you know was if cave woman x felt uncomfortable and she was a little upset or depressed or whatever and then you know the way whatever we believe gets carried on which is also the good news that when we believe what we want it to be that will be carried on in our lives and in the lives of other people. And that's what this summit is all about, right, Natalie? It's about completely up-leveling our mindset and everything that has to do with being a woman and rocking the entire full spectrum of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our mindset as well as tools and techniques, you know, sometimes we don't know what hormones to balance or where to go for that or how to do it, right? Or what to do with these relationships, especially now that many of us, you know, yeah. are either really lonely without a partner or spending way too much time with our nearest and dearest. And, yeah. You know, yeah. or I hear over and over from women who, oh my God, I'd so much rather try to get that elusive good night's sleep than have sex with, you know, my partner. Yeah. And all these things are do tend to be sort of common issues in this age. Because there are things, you know, there's ways we're meant to shed a lot of misconceptions and issues, say, we have around our sexuality so that we can fully come into our sensuality and our sexuality as women. And then ooh, all that other stuff flows. And there are That's all right. kinds of ways to help balance the body and the hormones. And especially for us very sensitive people, you know, it's really funny. My naturopath said to me, Uh, that when you're taking bioidentical hormones, for instance, that about 15 to 20% of women just have a really hard, you like, like 80% are super easy. Like you're just prescribed whatever the standard thing and it's easy and it works and that's it. But about 15 to 20% it's just like adjusting and fine tuning and back and forth. Yeah. And I thought about how 15 to 20% of the population are highly sensitive people. And I firmly believe that we highly sensitive people, right? We're sensitive to everything. We're sensitive to hormones. The hormones, yeah. To everything. everything. And so this knowledge is crucial because we don't have to suffer. This is so important. So everyone think about this. I mean, you're on the, so, so I know Natalie, I'm sure you can relate to this as, 
thinking back to, you know, coming into the world, whatever first memories are and being a youngster and having the sense as so many of our emotionally sensitive uh, sisters and brothers do that, that you just feel things more intensely. You've yeah. got more ability to know what's going on in the environment. And when you're younger, you may not really know what to do with this bandwidth. And yet it's a really, really powerful thing. And it is important to be able to work with it and know to, to be able to, to, to be able to do something with all that you know and to be able to be um, really functional and happy in that way. So what happens so with so many emotionally sensitive people is not a lot of people are clued in on this and it's not talked about. We're already in a culture where people tend to not talk about feelings, especially if the one in the family or, you know, has big ones and it's perceived like maybe it's over your parents' head or something to even deal with your, to even deal with like how much you love and how much you care. And I was raised you know. by two Soviet engineers. <laughs> well, think of every stereotype you have about you know, Soviets. Or engineers and yes. yeah so emotions that the people are going throughout life and everything is in high amplification well you know we're looking around and other people kind of are cruising through things and while we've got these incredible gifts that we're using i feel like what happens is that emotionally sensitive people feel a lot more wear and tear because you're off we're often carrying we're often processing other people's emotions that they aren't dealing with so we've got this big workload going on, whether we realize it or not, feeling lots of different feelings and emotions and having symptoms from an earlier age. And especially even before 40, I feel like emotionally sensitive people can get worn out sooner, start developing symptoms, hormonal symptoms, autoimmune disease. And, and so then it feels, again, extra to me, it feels extra important that emotionally sensitive people gain this expertise on the self. Everything that you're talking about, not only, and for me, really them understanding everything at an emotional level, but your whole system of yourself, because knowing how it works makes it so that you know how to work it. You know how to, how to work with it, how to utilize it. Otherwise, these things remaining a mystery, I feel like then this ends up in these categories of you know, it's the profile of you're anxious, you're depressed, you have ADD, you have thyroid issues. And you, have, and so by the time you're actually getting the menopausal territory, I feel like that's really what's creating so much stuff for the people that have the biggest symptoms is they were likely the sensitive ones along the way. And then it's just really, in some cases, like just so overwhelming. And yet, Natalie, as we're talking about, and your summit can help people understand, it doesn't have to be that way. No, absolutely not. Because here's the thing. I mean, you know, my interview with you was uh, right about, about this topic, right, for the summit is, is going to be so helpful to so many people. And I would venture a guess that pretty much 100% of the presenters and experts in the summit, and I mean, we yeah. have, you know, just world-renowned experts like Marcy Shymoff, Marie Dime, and Dr. Anna Kobeko, Marissa Peer, Carol Tuttle, so many women. And I shouldn't speak for them, but I would venture a guess that 100% of us are highly sensitive people. And isn't this well, amazing? That is who is drawn, right, to these Yeah, isn't this amazing? Then? Because also, here's what's to know, everyone, is that this emotional sensitivity, this highly intuitive bandwidth is not just meant for the suffering and to fix the suffering. It is meant to make your contribution. And when you were talking early, earlier, Natalie, about, you know, you were given the prescription, like all of us are given a prescription, whatever our family's framework is for how to be a person, whether they tell it or act it out or whatever it is, or they don't do something. And we're absorbing that framework and we've got the societal prescription, but it has absolutely been my experience myself and with so many clients that one of the hugest ailments, if not the biggest trauma for humans is living a life that is prescribed for them mm -hmm. rather and really prescribed by the way for survival much more than success right. because success would be your own definition of it and it's not a life that's prescribed for your self-actualization from the get-go and the amount of trauma of not living 
yourself and what you're here to do and contribute like these expert these experts these highly sensitive experts they they got this expertise on all this but it's also because they came here to contribute that as an as an emotionally sensitive leader in the world yeah absolutely i mean it's really it's who we are and these are sometimes the challenges to overcome right but in overcoming those challenges therein lies our gifts and what we're meant to contribute and all the ways we can impact. And that's what I love about it too, is, I mean, you are hearing from just world-class experts in their fields, but also women who all walk their talk, you know, they've lived it. They know what it feels like, you know, to be down on your knees with emotional pain. And they know how to cry. Oh, well, think about this too. And the, you know, what you were talking about earlier about that year that you took, that time that you took and the, the shedding of, of, of all the stuff that like was there and then the figuring out like, oh, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. And first of all, the courage to do that in a society that says, again, especially back then, you are cray cray if you don't follow the prescription and your whole life is gonna, I mean, talk about this conditioning. You can't, and this is this is in my book, The Method. It's like, I say something like, you know, the, the message is, don't trust yourself or you'll screw everything up. Like, I know, right? Right? And so think about all these trust issues that people have with other people when the reality is we've not really been taught to trust our own inner navigation system that is telling us what we like to do and who we like to be with and the things that we're interested in. And then when we try to, you know, follow the conditioning you know if you really were to attract people i feel you can start seeing the ailments in people and the discomfort from just recognizing along the way that you're supposed to basically be a version of somebody else and think about how traumatizing that is to people whether they can articulate that or not or even recognize that you know early on but i'm positive it's there no, absolutely and it's crazy and that's why i'm so passionate about what i do because ultimately helping people uncover their passion and purpose is exactly that, you know, letting go of all those boxes we've been put in or put ourselves in all that conditioning and getting to the heart of who am I, you know, what makes me come alive? What are my gifts and talents? What's the contribution that's meaningful to me? Because it is insane that we all come to this world with our own unique gifts and talents. And then we're like put into some, we're not giving them and we're not receiving. Natalie, I, this is so, everyone really key in on this because I was interesting. I was thinking about this over the weekend. Imagine you've come, which is true. You've come to the planet and you've come encoded, right? And your DNA is, is its own specialized thing. And this combination of, of who you are, how you were created to be, every single sequence is there, the way that this being works. And I was thinking about this, Natalie, like, your liver knows what to do. Your eyes know their purpose. Your mouth knows its purpose. Your heart knows its purpose. And we are just all part of that. But imagine you come here with all of this contribution to make. And our job is to get that from you and say, who are you and what do you have to say? Right. And then you go through your life feeling like you have to be somebody else. And this is somehow called a quality of life situation, right? Where insane you might go the whole distance and we never got your contribution out of you because you were doing something else with yourself. And I just find that flabbergasting to me that we are literally needing each, we're here all to, to get each other and give each other's contribution. Yeah, no, it is. Something? It's absolutely insane. And the societal pressure for it is so strong But it's, you know, I feel like it's a practice. It's something we, I mean, look, that's how I was raised, right? Then I went through so much to break free. I've spent nearly 20 years coaching and working with people on this issue. And as my oldest, who is now a senior in high school, started with this whole, you know, SAT college, you know, whatever, I found myself like getting all nervous (laughs) and and like, oh, but her dream is to, and it is. Right. strangely to be a doctor and so she needs Not this that. and this and this and i was like whoa my god if i can get sucked into it you know yeah, every, you got, we got to be constantly vigilant here yeah. well and this is why i love helping people with emotional training as well so that 
we can all see the difference. Here's the invitation, right? Is to see the difference between when you're in a long-standing pattern, which could look like something very responsible, like make sure daughter does X, Y, and Z. That could look right. very responsible because hundreds of generations before you were in that same paradigm. Right. And there's a paradigm shift that says, be in the purpose and help each other be in purpose. Because the moment you check, am I in a reaction or am I in an intention or am I in a pattern or a purpose? You can make the shift. And then Natalie, in your example, I feel like you can, you're still going to be in that support role and the advisory role, but you're going to be doing it from an intentional place, not a conditioned place. Yeah. Yeah. Although it's so funny whenever I say, honey, you sure you don't want to take a gap year, you know, go travel, yeah. find yourself. She looks at me and she says, mom, I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> well, at I, least you checked. Right? right. Exactly. At least there's, I offered go travel the world. There's, <laughs> there's there's no. checking. Otherwise we just end up, you know, in the framework that might've been per perfectly designed for our parents. If they were actually living in their Right. Purpose, which is not always the case. And I just find this so fascinating. And I'm so glad we're talking about this because I think the other big issue is that sometimes people feel like they don't know it. Right. And I also feel like sometimes there's a barrier to them knowing it because they're afraid to be honest with themselves because then it feels like they have to flip their whole life upside down. Right. And because there's only a certain amount of people in the population like yourself, Natalie, and like myself who help people identify who they really are and what they naturally already do and then recognize that that can be called their job if they'd like but that's really them being themselves right and there's and people real there's a, there's not a huge population yet of people it's growing yeah but who are able to be who they are and translate that into a service for others and share in this beautiful spiritual purposeful economy would you, is that what you find is that people might be afraid to even acknowledge it because now they don't know what to do? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And, you know, and it makes sense. People are afraid. I mean, the truth is the human mind is conditioned to look for safety and to keep us safe. Like fulfillment is all the way up here, right? In the middle of cortex. Yeah. <laughs> and the brainstem, which is where, the, you know, all the information goes from the body up, right? So first it hits the brainstem, which is the part that's just there to say, is this, are you, you going to be yeah. safe? <laughs> and the known is safe, you know, the predictable no. is safe. The way things have always been done is safe. Now, not to mention like all the, all of our anxious ancestors, right? We're the ones who weren't eaten by those saber tooth tigers. And they and had to figure it out. We are. Yeah. And so we are terrified of changing. And, you know, I forget who says this, but there's this great quote that I like to use that basically we change only when the fear of staying the same becomes greater. Than and the fear and what I'd same. love is to really invite everybody to upgrade that because when you have an intention to evolve rather than making your evolution a reactive thing, like, okay, I'm getting pushed off a cliff, so I might as well get some information on this. It's yeah. so different when you recognize that evolution is happening and you are in fact a micro evolution and that, you know, every, and especially in this era that we are in, things are evolving faster, which can be very overwhelming to people. And the cool thing is we can, we can evolve at the rate of evolution and what's going on. If we, if we open up to the recognition that that's what we're supposed to be doing in this time frame, because I don't, you know, I see it like so many things are outdated now. So many mindsets and belief right. systems and, and we all know it, but it's like to just step into saying, okay, maybe I don't even know what to do, but maybe my, I'm the one that's supposed to create the answer to it. And go Absolutely. For it, right? Yeah, right. Because the thing is, I mean, I can see, it, you know, as, as we've been saying, right, when I did this 25 years ago, just kind of drop out for a year yeah. and go find myself. <laughs> It was crazy. And now it seems like everybody is doing it, right? And yeah. more and more people are looking for those answers within themselves. And more and more people are realizing that, okay, our minds are trying to keep us safe. And so like, but wow, look at this, you know, as I proactively up level right. my thinking and my life, things just get better and better. And so now, I mean, 
to be honest, I, I had an issue with my doctor of all people this just yep. this morning. And yep. I could tell I was really triggered. And I noticed that it's a pattern that happens to me in various relationships over time. And I remember a time when this would be like, oh my God, what do I do? You know, a gazillion years ago. And today yeah. I was like, woohoo, I know just, uh, I did this whole havening thing and on it, like, wow, I finally see this pattern. I get to transform it and never have a tough time setting boundaries with people in positions of authority again. Cool. And that's how it works, right? It's so beautiful. And this is why, and it's so fascinating to me because, you know, our emotional foundation is the foundation of everything. How we experience everything is how we experience everything. And yet uh, the biggest part of our conditioning that I feel is so... It's behind, but it's like, tr- it's scratching and clawing to, to go <laughs> ahead, is this whole theory and storyline that facing ourselves, which also just sounds, I just made it sound scary, that being with ourselves, knowing ourselves, discovering, exploring, uncovering, and getting in there into the root and under the hood, as they say, that this is the scary thing, that it only happens to certain people who have problems and it's only for people who can't, you know, figure stuff out. And all of this stigma and all of this fear to just even have somebody maybe go to a therapy therapy session or look at why they continue to want one thing and keep creating the same thing. And it's just, a, it's like kicking and screaming for people to deal with their emotions. And just the word emotions is conditioning for... <laughs> Don't even want to go there because everyone I knew in my family never wanted to go there. And there's this huge, as you, as you're talking about now, there's this invitation to say, I want to go all in there. Let's go all into this thing that everybody feels like they want to run away from that. We also basically need for every second of every day. Absolutely. Like there's not a, just like your example, Natalie's example, everyone where she felt a reaction she was able to observe it as a witness instead of being in the pattern, then able to check it out, make a new choice, transform it. Now that doesn't continue in her in the same level. And, and then she doesn't send it out into the world anywhere. She gets able to send the energy that she wants to herself and her family and, and us here today. That's well, a really not, to mention, not to mention, and I say this for everybody, then we stop suffering. All of us, especially emotionally sensitive people. I mean, I know that when I go into the whole spiral of being triggered and emotions and Uh, anger or sadness or whatever it is, I'm exhausted like an hour later, right? And then there's recovery that takes forever. Right. Like, so the suffering on the physical level, on the emotional level, on the spiritual level, like we don't actually have to do that. Well, and you hit it on the head. Transform it. (laughs) Natalie, you are hitting it on the head for everyone here because this is what I'd love everybody to to learn about the so-called aging process because I think it's very different than what people may realize. My sense is that what's happening is every time we are in a reaction pattern from the time we're little, we are in some form of suffering. We get used to it. It gets conditioned and then whatever. We we all know this. The stimulus... Yeah. Sensitive people are processing all the stimulus in the environment, distracted, overwhelmed, chaos. And then that creates all these reactions in us. And the body is used to this chemistry, this reactive chemistry, stressful, tense, bracing, trauma. And then you're, again, you're exhausted and you're looking around going, why is everybody else running circles around me? And then emotionally sensitive people end up using like sheer will to, and and then their beautiful gift of of awareness also to push through, but they're not always enjoying life the way that they would if they were not stuck in these patterns, like you said, getting triggered and then going through the same cycle, recovering, and then knowing, oh my God, when's it going to happen again? Two and minutes you, later. Yeah, two minutes later. And then you add it, you add it up and you're like, shoot, now I'm 40. And how am I going to make it through the rest of this deal? When just the shift that you're talking about, which is an emotional technique that you're using, makes a difference. And this whole aging thing, everyone, has an entirely different paradigm on it, which is what makes life so exciting. And you're all invited. You're all invited. And why we're talking about it, Natalie, will you share the... Um, the name, the summit, the website, please. 
Yeah, so it's extraordinarylifeafter40.com. 40 is 40, the numbers. Just right. extraordinarylifeafter40.com. Come sign up. It's free. You get, I think it's 10 or 12 free gifts just for signing up, you know, little books, courses. Um, and then you will get access to nearly 50 experts this year. Um, on everything, like I said, from balancing your hormones to health, to how to live as an emotionally sensitive person, to sex, to relationships, to success, beauty, style, you know, everything that matters to women in this stage of life. And, you know, you can get last year, I literally, I mean, if I may share this, because it was just so technical, <laughs> this is my passion project. It was a real labor of love to get this out there. And so it was so wonderful when after the summit, I got these amazing emails from women saying, thank you so much. I cannot believe I didn't know this. I can't believe I got to 45, 55, 60 without knowing this information. I learned more from the summit than I did in my entire university uh -huh. education. And I was like, yes. So yeah, you can get a whole You're university a education here or you can pick and choose because guess what? It's free people. Well, you know, and, and whatever you need for your life. Think of this, Natalie, that, you know, the, and this is one of my basic premises, which is why so many of us emotionally sensitive people need to really grow into our leadership and trust that it's so essential because we aren't as a culture educating ourselves. We are not prioritizing what I call emotional education or, or what I refer to as selfology. Mm -hmm. And for years and years, I've been talking about like, you know, how, how is it that we, we have all these important things that we need to know how to do, but we also need this self to know how to do arithmetic or, whatever it is. And so we tend to have this whole uh, trajectory in our culture where suffering, as we just talked about, ends up being the impetus to fix a problem rather than the fact that we can ultimately become a society that grows in the knowledge of the self and how it works so that we're not 60 years old and somebody's going, oh, that's how your ovaries work or something. You know, you're like, well, that would have been great along the way. I, sh I certainly could have used that information. Right. You know, no, I, it's, absolutely. It's crazy. I mean, I couldn't believe that there I was in my mid forties and I had no idea, say, how my hormones work or that they're not just there to make babies, but literally are found in all of our organs. There's estrogen, you know, receptors, for instance, and they and they contribute to health so much. I mean, something as basic as that, you know, or how our bodies were. You know, we think we are so evolved and know about sex and know. Culture and all the rest of it. We know nothing. Or how to communicate. Oh. And but this is the exciting thing. This is what I think makes that 40 and yeah. beyond so exciting. It's like you're going to get your, you're finally going to get your, your selfology down. Right. And, and you get to learn and grow yeah. and inspire. And apply. Yeah. yeah and, apply, and apply all of this. Um, and again, it, it is so important. To be, and as I think about my own journey, as a very emotionally sensitive person, really able to feel what was going on in the environment growing up at you know, in a lot, so many ways, like so many people, we're, we're, we're little and we're inferior to have much authority over it and impact over it. And, uh, and so when you think about like all of the, of the struggle and the damage that has been done and you don't have this info and you're going through life and, and by the time I'm like in my early twenties, I've gone through a massive set of traumas, just even though I grew up in a, in a really fortunate situation, highly reactive, but very, very, you know, fortunate compared to most people on the planet. I, I, I know I end up with an anxiety disorder, depression and eating disorder, suicidality, just because like, if my dad said, yeah, said no to something, I, you know, I might've thought, I thought it was the end of the world, but that's how a sensitive person, you know, feels. And by the time I'm in my late twenties, I'm worn out. I'm done. I have an autoimmune disorder. And fortunately, when I seek out an integrative doctor, which back then, like you said, okay. now it's everything. But back then I was being told my hormones are all normal and you just are depressed and need an antidepressant. And I, as an intuitive sensitive person knew that that was the symptom of something deeper, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And therapists didn't seem to, they just said, okay, yeah, you're having problems and they didn't know how to solve it. So when I 
push and scrap and research and get my way to this great integrative doctor who now has worked with hundreds of clients together with me. And he does this whole set of lab work, Natalie, like more lab where I probably gave 20 vials of blood because he wanted to have a real baseline. And I thought, well, good, let's understand and get an x-ray of what's going on here because I'm not even 30 and I don't want to be taken like spending right. every afternoon, taking a nap when I want to go live my life. And so one of the things he said after he found eight different hormonal slash vitamin and mineral viral issues is wow. he said, he said, Tracy, and I had Hashimoto's thyroid because as you're, as a sensitive person, by the way, when you feel like you're imploding all the time, your system already starts to break down. So this wonderful doctor, Kent Holtorf is, is, is his name, and he's been very advanced and progressive for years in the integrative field. He says this most important thing to me. He says, we can fix all of these issues with bioidentical hormones, vitamins and minerals. And granted, I'm 28, everyone. Yeah. Okay? I'm 28 and I have the issues of, here's these menopausal issues, which seem like they're happening, but they're happening around just being super sensitive and stressed. But he says, Tracy, we can't fix these problems if you don't fix your relationship with yourself and the way that you navigate through life. And the whole world opened up for me right there. And I was given permission to not just take the hormones, but to treat the cause of all of these imbalances underneath that. Because some of you might be watching this and you're, you are in your 20s. And you have, and, and maybe your hormonal issues are caused by your emotions and then you want to keep track of them along the way. But the combination of this relationship with yourself and knowing everything that you need to know and that also you can learn at Natalie's Summit is so vital because you might have problems that 50 year old women used to have and you might start having them much, much sooner. And this expertise is critical on how you can be there for yourself and living the life that you're meant to live and having all of these tools and resources and vitamins and minerals and, and all of these things. It's huge. Yes, 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 yes. Come. It's absolutely, Come join us. This is absolutely essential. Now, one last thing I want to add on, Natalie, I've got oh, two more things, but one of them is I want to also just, you know, challenge everyone that to know in a good way, to know that um, as Natalie has shared with us about how far back in her life, she recognized that the prescription for success that she was receiving wasn't, she realized it wasn't her prescription, right? And as, as this own unique fingerprint that we all are and identical twins have their own unique fingerprint, that living your life's passion and purpose and to your point, Natalie, being <laughs> God bless you. Me. <laughs> so being you and knowing that you can cultivate a life that serves others and that you can, you know, a lot of people fear, how can I do this? How can I monetize it? How can I make that happen? The reality is that's all available to you. So I really invite everybody to come forth in their truth and what it is they're here to do what they're here to contribute and know that there are so many experts. Natalie is, we are experts in her summit are, and find somebody that will help you self-actualize what your purpose really is into a lifestyle and a career if you want it to be, and it doesn't have to be, but that that is what's available to you. And that's what you're here to do with the rest of your life. And that's why it's really going to be phenomenal and so good. Uh, to to fit, to go into it that way instead of dreading it and feeling like life is work, which is not my favorite, not not one of my favorite quotes at all. Life is work. No, no thanks. No. Um, Natalie, any thoughts on that before we do our final question? I just echo everything you say. <laughs> life is life is beautiful. Life is delicious. Yeah. You know, one of them. One of the real gifts of living in Colombia for the past nine years is here's a culture that has been so highly traumatized, so much conflict, war, I mean, corruption, all kinds of stuff. And yet there's a culture that developed of people truly savoring each moment. In fact, probably because of that, you don't know what's going to happen in five right, minutes. Right. Just enjoy the moment. And I have seen people, you know, of all socioeconomic brackets, you know, by take a bite of an avocado or an apple and just ooh and ah at how delicious it is. 
even though, you know, fruit grows year round all over the place there. But the point is, you know, just really savor the moment. And that is actually when I, you know, when I was saying at the beginning that I used to visualize and set my intentions and around what I wanted to do or, you know, have in life. And it's become more about how I want to be. It's mm -hmm. always about that, like living with an open heart, truly savoring each moment. Because that's that. our life. Well, and I love this for everyone because part of what I feel gets in the way of people, not only like getting what they want and that theory of it or strategy or experiencing it more accurately is they don't, if they don't experience what they actually have now, then there's a way they're not receiving it. And then there's a pattern of not receiving. And if you can't receive the beauty of an avocado and how awesome it is and what it does and these properties of it, and you're not receiving that that like is in, my, that's in my refrigerator. I just like had to push a button and it's in my refrigerator. And if we're not receiving well, we're then not going to get more. <laughs> it changes a pattern of, and then you're starving when you have everything in front of you. Right. And it's not that you all can't reach for the stars and everything that you want, but there's really something powerful about the fact that you might already be having it and just not be aware of it. Yeah. And not, to mention, really important. not to mention that you actually start getting everything you want. Because what you want is already there. Like it's we're so there. conditioned to think of it that way anyway. It's That's already right. there. The universe already knows what it is. And ironically, the more you focus actually on enjoying that present moment, yeah. and, you know, the more all that stuff actually comes to you even quicker. Right. Well, this is why, you know, self uh, emotional training and self training and every kind of training is so amazing because we were not taught these things essentially. Yeah. And so we get to teach ourselves and instead of, missing out on what we want and feeling so unfulfilled, we have a huge invitation to have what we're having when we're having it. And on that note, Natalie, I think you might have just given it to us, but I'm going to ask you one more thing, which is always on the show, which is if this happened to be the last contribution that you could make was something that shares with this audience. And ultimately then this is what the rest, the, the whole world will know that this is your message and contribution and they'll carry that forward the rest of their life. What would that thing that you think everybody should know um, that you would want to have be that really big contribution of yours? What would it be? Go for it. You know, you only get one life. Uncover what your passions are, what your purpose is. Live it. Don't be afraid because, you know, you are uniquely, uniquely you, and only you have your qualities, your gifts and talents, your passions, you know, big clues, you know, whatever makes you come alive is what you're meant to contribute. Your life's going to be better for it. The world's going to be better for it. And yeah, just stop hiding, get out there. Amazing. Natalie, thank you. thank you for being with us. And all of you have so many invitations here today, and we really invite you to take them. Thanks for tuning in and applying all of these amazing tools. And in between now, when I see you next, just remember you can always shift from reacting and put your intentions in place and live an elevated life. Thanks for being with us and take care. Thank you, Dr. T.